Do I do a two-hand stir for drama? Yeah, I think you do, yeah. I think I should. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to another Muddy Mint video. Today we're gonna to be making calming lavender soap. This is what it looks like. This is a goat milk, colloidal oatmeal, and lavender soap. And this is what the top looks like. We put a little bit of lavender on there and we've got a little purple swirl in here, but it's just two colors. And today I'm gonna have an assistant. Troy is gonna be helping make the soap today. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, everybody. So as I said, we're making calming lavender today. We have two buckets here. We're gonna just dive right into it. This bucket is actually already prepped and ready to go. And I'm gonna prep this one in front of you guys. Right here, we have our base oils. We have olive oil, coconut oil, cocoa butter, shea butter, avocado oil and castor oil. So everything is already in here. This is our one of our base recipes. Um, and over here we've got some ingredients that I'm gonna add in. The first one is goat milk. So that's gonna go straight into our oils. If you watched our live video, you'll know that we use a 50-50 lye solution and this is our extra liquid. So I'm gonna grab a spatula, make sure we get all that goat milk out. All right, so we've got our goat milk in there. Our next ingredient is colloidal oatmeal. Colloidal oatmeal is just really finely ground oatmeal. Um, it's really hard to grind it this fine yourself, so that's why we purchase it like this. So it's not exfoliating at all in the soap. It just has a really nice sort of soothing feel to the bar. Okay, got all our oatmeal in there. And then we're gonna add our lavender essential oil. This is just lavender essential oil, lavender 4042, which we use for soap making primarily. All right, get that all in there. So both of these buckets are ready. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick blend everything together before we add the lye, and that way they'll be ready to go. We just do this to make sure we fully incorporate all of the ingredients that we just added in here. All right, I'm gonna put this bucket aside. We'll stick blend it a little bit later when we're doing our second um, bucket. Normally when we make our soaps and our slabs, we do two layers, which is why we have two buckets here. Um, but this soap is really, it's two colors, but the purple is really just a little swirl, like I showed you earlier. So there's just a little bit of purple. And we've already prepped our clay right here. We're using purple Brazilian clay for this. So in here, we've got um, our purple clay and some water mixed in, distilled water. So this is what we're gonna put some of our batter into in order to make that purple swirl. All right. Before we start using our lye, we're going to get ourselves set up for safety. I'm gonna put on some gloves, pull my sleeves down. and make sure I have my glasses on. All right, I think we're ready to go. This is our 50-50 lye solution. So we're gonna be adding that into our oils and then this bucket will be basically saponifying. And during that time, Troy is gonna come over and stir so that this doesn't thicken up too much. And then we're gonna prep the second bucket the exact same way. And we're gonna pour into our mold, do our little purple section, and then we'll be all set. All right. See me? Yes. What's the liquid to lye ratio in this soap that we're using? That's a great question. So this is a two to one ratio. So in here we have 50% water and 50% lye. So this comes out of our 50-50 tank, which we talked about in our last video. Um, and then the additional liquid is goat milk. 
So basically it's one third lye, one third water, one third goat milk. So two parts water or liquid to one part lye. Perfect. Awesome. Thank okay. You. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, here we go. We're gonna add our lye in here. Make sure we get it all in there. All right. So I'm going to stick blend this to a pretty light trace because I know this bucket's gonna be sitting around for a little bit before we, whoops, pour it into our mold. Our stick blender is giving us a little trouble today, so bear with us. <laughs> Okay, I think that's pretty good. Should have brought my spatulas over here. We always have a lot of spatulas on hand for exactly this reason. All right, I'm just gonna stick my stick blender in the next bucket so we're ready to go. And Troy is gonna come over here now. This is my big move. He was the voice you heard earlier. Hi, Troy. There you go. Randomly asking a question. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do our second bucket. Actually, Troy, would you be willing to pass me the lie over there? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So first we're gonna mix up the oils and the milk and everything. All right, we're gonna add our lye. Why do we stir it like this? I was just about to talk about that. Good question. Um, one of the reasons that we stir like this is because, and if you're a soap maker, you'll know this, that the batter stays more fluid if you keep stirring it, which seems kind of a little counterproductive because, or not counterproductive, counterintuitive because when you stick blend, the batter gets thicker. Um, but when you're just using your spatula to stir, it just kind of keeps everything flowing and it prevents it from hardening up too much because the batter can get thick, really thick, if it just sits here without anyone doing anything to it. I think that was a perfect answer. Thank you. Troy's got like the mega gear on, the face shields, the big gloves. <laughs> I feel like an astronaut. <laughs> it's tempting just to wear my glasses and call that eye protection, but yeah, I don't. It really is not when you're dealing with lye or batter, especially because it can get under here, you know, like these glasses have kind of a protective section underneath. Right. All right, so we've got both of our buckets. Troy, I'm gonna give that to you. I'm gonna move some of the stuff out of the way. And here is our slab mold. So our slab mold holds 22 and a half pounds of soap. This is gonna make 64 bars of soap. And we're basically just gonna pour right in here right now. Since this soap is mainly one color with just a little bit of a swirl. <laughs> <laughs> I 
we can just pour this entire batter in. Wow, nice stirring job. Everything is beautiful. Thank you. That's my big move. Yeah, I know. Troy actually preps all the soap. He makes all the lye. He takes care of our butter tanks and basically helps run the whole business. So he doesn't just stir the soap, <laughs> despite what you might be seeing now. You also ask all the questions, don't you? All the really thoughtful. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> so for this soap, for this kind of swirl, it's kind of nice for the batter to be a little bit more set up so that the swirls actually come out a little nicer. Um, so it's actually not that big a deal to have this sit just a little bit. All right, so this is where Troy's pouring off a portion of this batter in order to make it purple. Again, this is purple Brazilian clay mixed with a little bit of water. Two-handed, this is where it gets really impressive. Yeah, looking good. All right, so I'm gonna pour this in. Don't be afraid to stick your spatula in here and kind of help loosen up the batter too if you want, if you feel like you need to. This is our third slab of the soap. We always make our soaps in threes. We made the other two off camera. Okay. So now I'm gonna tap this down a little bit and wiggle it around so that we don't have any air bubbles in here. Okay. All right, this is the fun part. Now we get to do some swirling. I get the exit stage left. Yeah, thank you for your help, appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so when you're swirling, or actually we're not doing the swirling right now, we're just drop, gonna drop this color in here. But what we want to do or be conscious of is kind of drop it from different heights. And the reason is that when you drop from high up, your batter is going to go way to the bottom of the soap. And when you drop from low, it's going to sit more on top. So what I'm doing is I'm going right in the center of each loaf. The loaves are marked off by these black marks on the side of the mold. And by going up high first and then coming in low, I know that I'm getting through different parts of the soap. I'm gonna get the rest of this in here. The reason I'm going in the center like this is just so that I kind of know where my soap is sitting when I do the swirling. We're gonna use a swirling tool for our swirling today. There's a lot of different ways to do swirls. You can use a spatula, which actually comes out quite nice. But if you happen to have a swirling tool, it's a really easy way to get some nice swirls in your soap. All right, this is my swirling tool. I got this from Nurture Soap. It is too short for my mold, which is okay, because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move sideways. Obviously, if it's too long for your mold, it's not gonna work. Um, but in this case, I can just go and do this part first, and then do the other half after. And what I'm doing here is I'm going straight down into the batter to kind of pick up that purple that I just dropped in. So we're going straight down, 
and then I'm coming over this way and kind of going in a circle. There are a lot of different ways to do this. This is sort of the fastest way because I'm not too particular about how the swirls look in here. You can do a figure eight or um, you can try swirling in the other direction too. I tend to just go in one direction. And less is more with swirling. If you do too much, your colors are gonna get muddied um, and that doesn't look as great. See me? Yes. Does the viscosity of the batter make a difference in how the swirls come out? Yes, it does make a difference. Um, if you have very thin trace in here and you're sticking your tool in there to try to get some swirls, it's not gonna pick up as much of the color as it would if you have a bit of a thicker trace. And so you don't want it to be too thick because then you might be creating air bubbles inside your batter, but you want it to be thick enough so that your tool can actually pick the batter up and sort of move it around efficiently. So yeah. Perfect. All right, so that's it for the soap batter. What I'm going to do now is kind of flatten up this top a little bit because the swirling tool kind of created some little edges and I want the whole thing to be flat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but. And now we're actually gonna wait for a little bit because even though this batter did have some thickness to it, it's not quite thick enough to texture. We like to do a pretty heavy texture on our tops. And I'll just show you when you go in here. That looks pretty good. And for a lot of soap makers, maybe that would be fine. But I prefer to do a much higher texture than this. And so we're just gonna let this sit probably for I would say three to four minutes, and then we'll check on it in a little bit. All right, so I just tested the batter again, and it is ready. It's probably been actually about five minutes, maybe more even. And you'll see that these little peaks really stick up now. What we're gonna do before I get too far into this texture is I'll show you the soap again. So you can remember what it looks like. So this soap has a top that's pretty bumpy. So that's what we're creating right now. And we're gonna put lavender essential, or not essential oil, <laughs> lavender buds on top. All right, let's get back to texturing. This is the signature muddy mint texture. Basically two swoops on each side and a swoop in the middle. we're going to put in some of these lavender buds. These are dried lavender buds. You definitely want to make sure that they're fully dry. You don't want any kind of moisture in here because then they might get moldy, which is not good. I'm just going to sprinkle them on top. A lot of people have issues with lavender buds, so this is kind of an optional step. Some people find that they turn brown on top of their soap. We live in Colorado where there isn't very much moisture. So I think that probably helps. I'm not exactly sure why some people have botanicals that turn brown. Our lavender buds do actually turn brown a little bit after you put them on the soap, which you might actually be able to see, but then they go back.
All right, and the final step, since we've put all these lovely lavender buds on here, we wanna make sure that they stay on here and don't go anywhere when we cut the soap. Obviously, some of them are still gonna fall off, but what I like to do is just use this little tool to kind of press some of these down. I usually go pretty fast. You don't have to be super careful with this because the soap batter is still pretty um, fluid, so the lavender buds kind of stick on here by themselves. All right, we are all done with our soap. Actually, what I might do is show you one of these that we made earlier because it actually looks quite different once it starts to um, solidify and it's, the colors kind of come out a little bit nicer. So we'll be back in just a sec with the other one. We might even put them side by side. Okay, so this is the slab that we just made and you can see what the colors look like. Everything still looks really wet and fresh. And then here's the one we made probably about half an hour to an hour ago. And it's starting to solidify and it's starting to get a little bit of gel. You can see some of the dark, darker sections in here. But the colors have also kind of lightened up a lot, which is more like what the final soap is going to look like. So anyway, I thought that would be fun to show you guys the difference. All right, that's all we have for you today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.